the predefined variables. Here's a screen capture of what they are and what, they, what you should expect them to look like. Uh, CLI session type, it'll tell you whether it's Telnet or SSH, of course, or uh, CLI user, uh, this one's currently admin. And the status of last command executed is zero, which means it worked. The status of the last command is where you want to start reviewing if you want to add error checking into your scripts, which some people might. This slide we're going to review CLI.out in a little bit more detail because of the power and the usability of this system variable. CLI out is set with either the set var CLI out dot out double quote double quote or set var CLI dot out with a zero. It instructs XOS to create a variable that captures the next command line inter interface output. It will continue to do that and it's reoccurring as we stated in previous slides and it's a volatile command. It doesn't capture the show var, it doesn't capture load script with a script name. It can be used to capture CLI data to create variables based on that capture and it has a limitation of one megabyte. This is a powerful system variable that can create very dynamic and extensible scripts. It allows you to take an input, modify that input, and then take action based on that modified input. When using special characters and scripts, there are some things to take into account. First, the dollar sign is a special character that Extreme XOS recognizes as a variable name to follow. We see that when we list our system and predefined variables, your dollar sign status, dollar sign CLI.user, dollar sign CLI.session underscore type, and dollar sign CLI.out. The quote characters surround text strings. So, when you're looking at that bullet set var dollar sign cli dot user double quotes robert space smith and double quotes that's encapsulating that string in which in, in regular cases if you put a space without the encapsulation the script may not run correctly or the variable may not take correctly so it's good to encapsulate long sets of strings of data in quotes in double quotes the backslash character is an escape function in most coding languages, including our XOS scripting based on tickle functionality, the backslash escapes out a special character and informs the script to treat it as a normal character. So in our set var variable name, backslash dollar sign variable name, we're telling the script engine to treat that dollar sign as a regular character. In the case of set var dollar sign CLI dot user double quotes Robert backslash double quotes Bob backslash double quotes Smith we can see that that equals Robert double quotes Bob double quote Smith and it treats those quotes as regular characters and it displays them so if you step back up to the previous bullet set var variable name backslash dollar sign variable name that's going to equal dollar sign variable name as the variable it becomes important to be aware of this in some unusual cases when you have an encryption string, for instance, with an encrypted password within the XOS operating system. And let's say, for example, you're doing a bulk password change across your entire infrastructure. You may have to go in and escape out those special characters that will be in the encryption string to inform the XOS scripting engine to treat those as regular characters and thereby it will encrypt properly. When working with variables, there are some things to note. First, variables are case insensitive. So if you set a variable myVar, and then in a preceding line you set the variable again but with an uppercase myVar, they're the same variable. Second, they're limited to 32 characters. The variable name has to be unique. A variable can be, can be referenced encapsulated in parentheses or not encapsulated in parentheses. If it already exists, it's overwritten. There's no error message. A variable is a named container for data, so when it is time for the data to change, it's overwritten when it's called to. Only the set var CLI command supports expression evaluation. 
if the variable name contains special characters within it, so that named container for data, if the container contains special characters, star, slash, plus, it must be encapsulated in parentheses. This lets Axos know that there are special characters in the variable. When you're using a variable with a special character, like in the case of cli.user or cli.out, you must encapsulate them in curly braces in the TCL command function, as the example indicates in the bullet item. Dollar sign TCL string length, and then evaluation of the CLI user, but we call it with a dollar sign curly brace CLI.user curly brace. Okay, so what we're looking at is the Corporate Systems Engineering Virtual Lab TFTP server. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an LS. I'm going to quickly show you that there are some remnants of a prior backup from the backup script that I'll be running to demonstrate the power of XOS scripting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly delete this. And by the way, this is Linux, and you're seeing an rm-rf command. That's recursive with force. Be very careful. You can destroy your entire operating system with the command, because it just destroys and does not ask. Okay. The remnants are gone. Now we are on our Corpus EX250. I'm going to do a quick LS to show what's on there. And as you can see, there are quite a few files on there already. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a load script backup and watch it do its magic. So as you can see, it just took in an LS. It is running all of its commands, taking in variables, and it is uploading policy files, XSF files, and in just a second you'll see config files to the TFTP server automatically and programmatically, tagging it with the system type, system name, date, and then file name. You could set this to run as a universal port profile when someone SSH is in or someone telnets in. So the moment a user telnet's in or SSH is in, a backup process is started. We'll give it just another second to complete. Okay, and now it's done. So we're going to scroll back up to our TFTP server. We'll run a quick LS. And as you can see, everything is there. And what we're looking at is the programmatic backup of all the files on the operating system. And as you can see, there's a date and time stamp as well as the file name. This is very, very powerful. In summary, Module 1 has discussed configuring for scripting, working with scripts, variables, and we showed off the power of XOS scripting. Configuring for scripting, we discussed CLI modes, abort on error and ignore error. We discussed persistent and non persistent mode and why those are important, how there's a difference if you're running a static script at the CLI or a dynamic script. We've discussed working with scripts. We've introduced VI as a function on the switch that you can use a couple of alternate programs for different platform types. We've discussed what a variable is, a named container for data. And again, we saw the magic of XOS and scripting. This concludes Module 1. Thank you for listening. This is the end of this training module. Visit the Extreme Networks website for information about our other exciting networking products. Extreme Networks. Tomorrow's network. Today.